Hello, you are on with Sir Majesty's World Science Channel. Today we will be discussing abortion. We will give you the basic information you need to know about abortion as one of the things we will give you in your health tips in our channel. Today with me is a specialist in pharmacy farm, Dr. Uchechi Stephanie Oba. So she will be the one handling us because she's a genius in this area of pharmacy. She will tell us what we need to know about these drugs that is used for abortion. Thanks for watching. So, we will start with first, what is abortion? Abortion. I'm, I'm very sure that most of us, everybody has heard, okay, not everybody, but most people have heard of abortion, you know. But medically speaking, abortion is the removal of the fetus in the womb or the child, the growing baby in the womb before time. Premature removal. Of the growing baby in the womb or the uterus before term or before the um, nine months in travel. Okay, the term here means like before parturition. No. Okay. Yes, sorry, yes, yes. Before okay. parturition. Before parturition. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Then when is it necessary to carry out abortion? Um well, this is a very, very dicey subject, you know. When it's, when it's necessary to carry abortion, to carry out abortion, most times is when the pregnancy poses a risk to the life of the mother. Okay. Yes. In, in, uh, there are instances, there are cases where a, a woman gets pregnant, but it happens that the pregnancy will either lead to her maybe worsening her condition or her dying. So that's when mostly when abortion is recommended, when abortion is to be carried out, to save the life of the mother. Okay. To make okay. sure she does, because you can have, the mother can give birth again, but you can't um, let the mother give birth and leave the baby. Okay. Motherless. So, okay, that's great. Which means, apart from this, there is no other medical reason for carrying out uh, abortion, but in the world today, some countries, some states all over the world mm. can carry out abortion on the demand of the person without the pregnancy imposing any risk on the woman yes. in charge. So what do you say about that? Well, there are countries where abortion is legalized. You know, legal, when I say legalized, I mean um, it's legal. You can request an abortion okay yes so it's not like you're committing a crime and you wouldn't give them reason for requesting for abortion of course it would be just personal reason that i don't want to keep this pregnancy exactly and you just get up you don't you don't maybe you don't have the means to take care of the baby when okay. the baby is born or you're not um you're not um, how would i say now you're not emotionally stable to, to carry the handle baby. the child okay. different reasons Okay. Yes. Okay. But this will not occur in countries where abortion is still illegal. No. Okay. What about rape cases? Okay. Yes. Also, in rape cases, yes, abortion is also um, recommended, medically speaking, in rape cases. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is for both countries where it is legal and where it is illegal. It is still accepted. Mm -hmm. When it is confirmed that this is a rape case, the health organization wouldn't flag it off carrying abortion in those countries where this is legal in countries where it is legal yeah where it, when it, where it is called, uh, confirmed as a rape case of course okay i mean where it is illegal yeah i don't know okay that is just by the way now uh, on that aspect we have seen that in some countries abortion can be legalized in some countries it's not for your own country, if it is not legalized, you have seen the conditions where you can walk up to a doctor or a medical practitioner and tell him to remove your baby for you. That's only when it will cause the death of the mother in charge. And that's the only case. And when we have rape case. So the next thing we will see here is what are these drugs that can be used to carry out this abortion and their effectiveness at what stage would they be applied and who should be the person in charge of abortion? Okay, first of all, um, 
the person that is licensed or is supposed to carry out an abortion is a licensed health practitioner is a licensed um to be more specific gynecologist okay or a um, physician okay. to be specific a gynecologist a because gynecologist. a gynecologist is a specialist for women okay mm -hmm. so that's in that case somebody that is licensed to practice is is um, the rightful person, is a rightful to, person yes to carry out that to carry out okay. an and okay. then um this Abortion drugs. There are drugs, of course. I know many of us. We may have heard about them. We may even know them, you know. But we want to talk about them and let you know the pros and cons of using them. Okay. So first of all, we have um, there is um, misoprostol. Okay. There is mifepristone. There is um, dinoprostone. And then sometimes um, this drug methotrexate is also used sometimes, not all times, but majorly the first three I mentioned are, um, are used mostly to carry out the abortion. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then all you know, we have three times in pregnancy: first, second, and third trimester. Yes. So. I'm like of the opinion that some of this drug will only be effective at certain stage of pregnancy or will you apply any of this drug you have mentioned at any of the stage of pregnancy to remove the baby? No, first of all, you can only, abortion is only done usually in the first trimester within the, um, because if each trimester consists of three months, three months, that will be 12 weeks. Okay. for each trimester okay. so for the first and second trimester that is when abortion is usually done so okay. there are some drugs that like um, misoprostone and mifepristone they are usually used for between 9 to 11 weeks okay. of pregnancy 9 to 11 weeks, weeks then dinoprostone is used for between 12 to 20 weeks okay. yes Pregnancy. The roots of administration and those ages with regard to age and some other factors. Okay, first of all, for uh, for misoprostol, that one, there are different um, routes of administration. There are about two routes of administration. One one is the oral route, that is taking it through your mouth and swallowing the tablet. And then the, the other one is um, the vaginal root. So it's made as a suppository. A suppository is a form, a, a, a drug form that is supposed to be inserted into the vagina where it acts locally. And then um, um, it comes in, is either as a tablet, it comes as a suppository. And then even Preston usually comes as a tablet to take it orally. 200 mg um, 200 milligram of mifepristone and most times is used in conjunction with misoprostol to effect the abortion you take mifepristone on the first day then 24 to 48 hours later you take misoprostol you take four tablets of misoprostol and then after three hours you take another four tablets that is for nine to eleven weeks of pregnancy Yes. Okay. But when when carrying out this abortion is supposed to you're not supposed to do it yourself. You're supposed to do it under medical supervision. So that in case anything comes up, in case there's an emergency, it can be handled. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, farm doctor Uchechi. It's a, a lot of pleasure to have you. You've been doing this job so well. It's like Thank you. <laughs> You, you are a young graduate, but you are acting as if you have practiced even for about 10 years or more. So I'm proud to have you here. Thank you. So the next here, viewers, we will see how these uh, particular drugs, abortion drugs, how do they act? How do they affect the removal of this uh, fetus or removal of whatever from the uterus? How do they act? Okay.
So as we know, different drugs, drugs act in the body and they have different ways of acting. So first of all, for, mis for misoprostol, it's, it's a prostaglandin analog. Okay. So the way, first, first of all, before I forget, originally, misoprostol was the original intention, the original use was for cytoprotection. That is the walls of the um, gastrointestinal tract. It's supposed to protect the walls. Um, in cases of people that take NSAIDs, people that take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay. So those drugs, ulcer patients. yes, okay. those drugs induce ulcer in the long um, run. We keep taking them in the long run. So they wear out the walls, the lining of the walls of the, the stomach, the yeah. mucus, yes. So what the, in the initial use for which Soprostol was that it helps to coat the lining of the stomach bicarbonate, it enhances bicarbonate secretion. So okay. it helps to coat the lining of the stomach, the lining of the um, mucosa okay. lining, yes. So it does that. So in doing that, it protects the lining of the stomach from wearing off. Okay. So you mentioned yes. about bicarbonate, so, which means you may play a role in maintaining the pH balance. Yes. So, um, but uh, in extension, it also affects or it also affects the walls, the, the muscles of the uterus. That is the one. Okay. So that's where it comes into play. As an as an apotifacient. so that's where it comes into play. It 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 um induces contraction, contraction of the uterus, yes, okay. the uterine muscles, and that's um myometrium. It's they are called myometrium, yeah. the muscles of the uterus. Yes, so it induces yeah. contraction of those muscles, which will now lead to expulsion of its contents. Okay, is the contraction gradual or rapid? Well, it, it usually, um, as opposed to normal labor, okay. as opposed to normal labor, normal labor, as we know, the contraction begins gradually and, and the increases intensity increases or positive, progresses. Positive yes. feedback mechanism. Yes. But in this case, the drug is just acting on the receptors. Okay. It's just acting on the receptors, making them to contract. So there is no rapid... There's no progression. Okay. So that's why you, most times when you take the drug, within two to three hours, the patient already has started bleeding. So which shows that, that is when all things go well, which shows that the drug is already working. The okay. effect is already being seen. Okay. Then, these things, I heard you say they are analogs of prostaglandins. It, it happens that this prostaglandin can be produced naturally in our body. Yes. So, which means, can a woman stand a chance of having abortion spontaneously without taking any of this drug? Maybe due to hormonal or local hormone production imbalance. Well, of course, yes. Okay. Yes. In that case, we may use the term miscarriage. Yes. No longer. But there are, there are different, there are many factors. That can cause that. Can cause that. Yes, there are okay, many factors. Okay. But many when the abortion is unintentional, no drug was used, mm. I think you can medically say it's a miscarriage. It's still a miscarriage. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That in okay. a miscarriage, there are many you know, factors that may okay. have to So, it. from what she's telling us, it shows that generally the abortion drugs act based on causing the uterine muscles. The myometrum to contract. The contraction and the also relaxation spasmic will expel the fetus out of the uterus. And when it is premature, that's what we call a abortion. So at this stage, the next step is can one get this drug on your own as you have called them? Like is it an OTC drug? All these drugs we have mentioned, dinoprostone, misoprostone. Can a layman just walk up to the apothecary or go to a candy shop or drug dealers and buy it? Well, um, the standard is that it's supposed to be. I don't know what is obtainable in other countries, but the standard is that it's supposed to be obtained on prescription. Okay. 
Okay. In other words, you have to have a prescription and you go to a pharmacy and give them your prescription and you see that this is a doctor's prescription and the prescription is illegal. Okay. That is okay. the standard condition. But you know Okay, that should be the correct thing because if not, the drug will be abused and you cannot contain, uh, let's say, self-administration. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, over here in Nigeria, it should be based strictly on doctor's prescription. Now, the next thing we will see here is uh, taking a look at these uh, drugs. What should be the side effects of these drugs, even when used correctly and when used wrongly, like using them will really endanger the fertility of a woman because some may have bought at a stage hoping to keep the next pregnancy mm -hmm. so what are the side effects what are the concomitants of using this uh, particular abofficient using them wrongly or even rightfully because side effect doesn't matter if you use it wrong or right there are ones that are there okay well okay you talked about side effects yeah Having known that the drugs act in the uterus and understanding that they act by majorly contracting the muscles, making the muscles contract, so you would naturally expect cramping. Okay. Yes. Discomfort, cramping. So okay. you would naturally expect that. You would expect bleeding. Yes, bleeding. Okay. Yes. And then sometimes, or most times, Fever, fever, because these prostaglandins they also play a role in temperature regulation. Yeah, regulation, yes. Okay. So they increase body temperature. So fever Come is on. also sometimes then sometimes dizziness, feeling of nausea, nausea, yes. Mm. Then um, itching sometimes because it's fiery. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. So. That's but the, when when used, that these these are normal side effects. side effects. Okay. But when abused or when it is not used well, other things can complications yes. like now. One of the reasons we say that it should be done under medical supervision is to prevent complications. Okay. Because there are cases where you take the abortion pill normally but eventually the abortion may be incomplete so in that case you will need a medical practitioner you need a physician to be able to ascertain whether it was complete or not so if for example someone doesn't um, uses it illegally or obtains it by him or her, by herself sorry then what happens is that when there is incomplete abortion the person may not know Okay. And that would lead to, usually leads to severe infection, severe infection of the uterus, okay. you know, bleeding, and then in rare cases, what happens, infertility, the person may not be able to conceive again. Why? Because for the uterus to function well, to function well subsequently, you need to expel every single content. Okay. So when the abortion is inc incomplete, that means that not everything was removed. So the remnant would be there and would start causing some havoc. Okay. Yes, which will lead to all those. Okay, that's great. You, you are, you've seen the, the implications of uh, using this drug by yourself without uh, an expert in that field. And uh, these things she explained may not be reversible. So you dare not try taking the risk. Even in the countries where they are legalized or where they are not, you need a... Uh, Especially, she told us earlier, a licensed gynecologist is who should carry out abortion. Can uh, anything be done when abortion is incomplete? Like you rightly said, that when we have incomplete abortion, it may lead to a complication of rendering a woman sterile. So, what can be done? Of course, like I, like I said earlier, you have to do it under the supervision of a medical practitioner, a physician specifically. So when abortion, when it's ascertained that the abortion is incomplete, the only thing that is usually done is to surgically remove the remnant. Okay. So the, the surgeon goes in there, the doctor goes in there and removes 
or whatever is remaining. Okay, okay. The remover is it in form of uh, don't mind my ignorance. Does it include cesarean section or dilatation and curettage? Which of them? Or no. maybe none of them. The cesarean section is that is that that one is um, pertains to delivery. Yeah. Uh, okay. The dilatation and curettage, like you already said, we call it DRC. Yeah. Yes, so that's what usually done. That's okay, the dilatation and curettage, okay, will evacuate everything yeah. and that will keep the woman safe for fertility. Yes. Okay, next, uh, we will check if there is any other medical use of these drugs mentioned apart from abortion. Can it be used for therapeutic reasons? Those, you know, prostone, misoprostone, you just mentioned. Can there be any other medical use of it? Well, of course, for like like I said earlier, these drugs they affect or they act on the uterus. So apart from being used as abortifacients, that is being used for, to carry out abortions, you could also use them for um, for example, misoprostol. It can also be used to induce labor. Okay. Yes, it's also used to induce the For induction of labor, or labor is delayed. There are some, yes, there are some inst instances where a woman, she's at term, but labor has not begun. So you can use these drugs to at least help her to start, help her body to start contractions. Same with, same with dinoprostone. Dinoprostone is also used to induce labor. Okay. And then it's also used, for dinoprostone now, it's used also for cervical or cervical ripening, I meant to say. Okay. Yes, cervical ripening. That is to help the cervix to dilate. So it's also used to help the cervix to dilate so that labor can um, progress smoothly. Then misoprostol, so apart from apart from being used for induction of labor and abortion, is also used, like I mentioned earlier, as a cytoprotective agent. It's used to protect the lines of the walls um, of the mucosa of the intestine in the, in the gastrointestinal tract so that it doesn't um, wear away by NSAIDs. So people that are taking NSAIDs, they usually take it alongside so that it protects the lining, so that they don't come down with ulcer in the long run. Okay, you are very much talented. How I wish I was a student, I will never leave your sight. You elucidate these things, you get it in details into the eye of a layman. So, you. but there are ones that may create some confusions to a layman, a layman like us, though I'm not all that ordinary. You mentioned term, you mentioned level, okay. induction of level. Yes. So, I need to, can you help explain to a layman what you mean by term here? Pre term, level, or level, you used it. Okay, medically speaking. When we say a woman is at term, what it simply means is that she's due for delivery. Okay. That's just what it means. Okay. So she's due for delivery. She's supposed to give birth. So it's time for her to give birth. That's simply put. Okay. So when you hear pretend labor, is just like saying to a, a layman, premature labor. Okay. Labor that came before it was supposed to come. Labor that came before its time. Okay. Yes, so that's what term means. When we say at term, at the right time to give birth. Okay. In simple English, that's what it means. Okay, then to induce labor means what? Okay, to induce something means that usually induction, it means that normally it's not there. You force it. So you force it, it, you initiate okay. it to, to, okay. to happen. Okay. So to induce labor means that initially labor was not happening. But you made it happen, happen. without um, the you natural body process. Okay, okay. So you made it happen. Okay, it's just something like taking else. over the work of the natural yes. oxytocin, prostate yes. If so they are not there, yes, then these yeah, drugs yeah. can can help to okay. start it. Okay. Yes. That's great. Uh, now the next we will take a look at uh, here. Uh, it is going to be more like an opinion this time around. As a young girl of your age and as experienced you are in pharmacy what do you say about legalizing abortion 
in our country, Nigeria, will you support the idea or are you going against it that will remain in that level we are? With uh, reasons coming from your experience as a pharmacist and also in your religious life. This is an opinion. Well, like I said, this topic is a very touchy one when it comes to legalizing abortion because you have people saying, um, you have people that have the opinion that if you legalize it, it gives people more um, freedom, freedom to do what they want to do, to be reckless with their lives and all that. But personally, what my take on it is that, except, well, the way I see it is that if people, if human beings could reason well, because that you have people that are very reckless in their, they are reckless with their reckless in their decisions. If human beings are not reckless, then I don't see anything wrong with legalizing abortion when you need it. When you feel you don't, um, when you need it, fine, you can go and request for, for an abortion. You can go to your, uh, your doctor and request for an, for an abortion. But on the other hand, you still see that for some people, when, when it happens this way, you see that some people, like I said, they will start being reckless. You know, after all, I can go and I can, I can get an abortion anytime I want it. So, so basically for me i think i'm i'm still on defense on that matter because on the side yes. yes i'm still on defense i haven't i'm, I'm okay I it just, depends on the majority of exactly. individuals and you can't bring everybody to reason the same way exactly. so they now for nigeria maybe they consider the religious aspect of it like most yes, of exactly. us if we were aborted we wouldn't be here speaking exactly. And uh, sometimes the difficulty, some people say they can't keep the pregnancy. Some will keep the pregnancy and still overcome it yes. and give birth successfully. And some of them end up being great. Maybe it's just to restore humani the dignity of humanity and yes. to hold life prestige. Because life is precious. Life is, of course, precious. precious. So since, for me, in my own opinion, though you didn't ask me, I think Nigeria should remain in where they are, that abortion should be illegal or less on the conditions that we mentioned earlier to respect life, to hold the dignity of life and also to respect God because I'm also a Christian. Okay, now the next thing you now have to say is having seen these things, that uh, having the abortion is illegal, then what do you say to teenage girls and women that indulge in illegal abortion? This is just like an advice, just to remind them. Well. First of all, as as a female, understand that we are we are very vulnerable. We are the ones who usually take the blow at the end of the day. Yes. So you cannot it's not sensible for you to play around with your life because you are the one who gets pregnant. You are the one who when you when you eventually decide to have an abortion, you are the one who will be left with to uh, bear the consequences. If any complications come up, it's still on you. So my advice is this: do not, do not engage in illicit sex, even if you have to. There are there are condoms everywhere. There are protective methods that can help you and prevent you from getting pregnant if you have to. But it is best you stay of it. it is Abstinence. Best you abstain. Well, due to sex hormones, it's quite difficult it's, to maintain that. It is best to abstain. But like I said, even if you can't, okay. if you can't, then by all means, please get play safe. Exactly. Like and play safe. Play safe. safe. Play the match safe. So you over there, you should play safe. Or rather, abstain if you can't. But uh, maybe your religion will help you, but this is not about religion, this is about nature. <laughs> so you have to be careful. Now she has said it all. Now, this time around, this is your first visit to this channel. So what do you say to viewers and subscribers to this channel about this channel? Of course. Okay, so for the viewers out there, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. And then for the subscribers, please. Tell your friends about it. Share, 
share the video share the links this is a this is a very educative channel where you will get to learn so much more i'm sure i'm very sure that you've learned one or two things today if not more so please don't deny the next person of this opportunity to learn so share Thank the you. video and stay blessed so um Samaria, i'm so honored thank you for having me thank you for coming thank you for having me very nice it's a wonderful opportunity to have a genius like you take us through all these abortion ideas i'm sure now if you have any other question that is confusing you you use the comment box there she will be right there to still assist in the answering of the questions what we just need is your contributions please share like and stay subscribed thanks for watching samaji sees world science channel is the best and this is the home of easy science and that's why it is called easy world